It was not by the standards of mid-18th century Barbados a great house. It may not have even been a particularly fashionable one. It was probably not even a particularly well-furnished home. The house was over 30 years old, and a short time before the Washington brothers came to Barbados, it had actually been used to house French prisoners during wartime. If the house lacked anything in grandeur, it certainly made up for it in location. The prospect is extensive by land and pleasant by sea, as we command the prospect of Carlisle Bay and all the shipping in such manner that none can go in or out without being open to our view. With the housing problem solved, there was much at hand to capture his curiosity. There was a whole new world to explore. George referred to Barbados as one entire fortification. Um, the entire west coast of Barbados was sort of bristling with cannons and gun emplacements, and in the neighborhood of Bridgetown, large masonry forts, the first ones that George Washington ever saw. Young George spent a lot of time examining the superior fortifications along the coast of Barbados, including the nearby Charles Fort which he explored with its commander, Captain Petrie. Prior to his Barbados trip, George Washington had never expressed any particular interest in a military career or in military matters. But in Barbados, with all the fortifications in front of him, meeting generals and admirals of one of the most heavily defended places in the British Empire, Washington, for the first time, seems to have imagined a military career for himself. The other great passion Barbados stoked was George's love of agriculture. He was raised to run a plantation. And when he went to Barbados, he saw plantations not only growing an entirely different crop. Washington was used to the cultivation of tobacco, and in Barbados, sugar was the major crop. But farmers who operated in an entirely different way. The earth in most parts is extremely rich and as black as our richest marsh mold. I think that he thought in terms of becoming a great planter, uh, and most of his activities, even his surveying activities, were aimed in that direction. Barbados is, by comparison to Virginia, a tiny place. There isn't a great deal of arable land, and as a consequence, farmers in Barbados had, even from an early date, practiced much more uh, sensible, sustainable, we would say today, agricultural practices. Washington learned about this while he was there. And when he goes home, Washington becomes one of America's most important progressive farmers. But George's education was suddenly curtailed by what turned out to be a fortuitous illness. Remarks for November 17th was strongly attacked by the smallpox sent for Dr. Lanahan.
By the 17th century, smallpox had become the most terrifying and deadly of all diseases. Three in 10 died of it, but those who survived were immune to further attacks. You know, Barbadians always like to say that we saved him for the American Revolution and for the presidency, because it's highly unlikely that if he had not gotten immunity by having smallpox here, that he would live through the American Revolution. Thousands died, probably more than died during the actual fighting. While their time in Barbados had strengthened the character of one brother, it had disappointed the other. Well, it was a great adventure for George. Um, unfortunately, it was disastrous in terms of uh, uh, the change of scene helping to mitigate Lawrence's illness. Reluctant to give up on the Caribbean altogether, Lawrence decided to stay behind, then continue on to Bermuda while George returned to Virginia for the spring surveying season. Before his return to Mount Vernon, George had one final stop to make, the mansion of Virginia's Lieutenant Governor, Robert Dinwiddie. He arrived there in February, 1752. Here was something Washington could talk about with the powerful Dinwiddie, Barbados. That would be the subject of conversation. He no longer needed others to further his course. In a way, Washington owed his success and his later political life to the connections he derived out of the Barbados experience. George made such an impression on Dinwiddie that in years to come, the governor would remember him favorably. And Washington would later successfully press Dinwiddie for an appointment as one of Virginia's military adjutants. Tragically, on the death of his beloved Lawrence, George was given the position of military adjutant, which Lawrence had held before him. How heavy weighs my heart so deep in sorrow. You, great sir, have passed with dignity, having battled for so long in hope of recovery. I will miss the counsel you have given me over time and hold dear its import, especially since the passing of our father. Thank you, honorable sir, for the time you graced us all with for the intimacies of travel we shared and most dearly for the entrustments you bestowed upon me. Godspeed, Lawrence Washington, affectionate brother. Less than a year after his return from Barbados, he would receive a commission to confront the French on the Ohio River a mission that changed the course of Washington's life and ultimately led to the French-Indian War. Washington had begun to make history, and it started in Barbados. Washington never went anywhere out of America before this trip to Barbados, and he never went anywhere out of America after this trip. They kept him kind of busy after this. I think young people today are not looking to our real leaders for inspiration. 
And, and I think that by putting Washington standards of character and leadership back into the public eye, we can hopefully address that situation and, and explain to people that even though the 18th century and the 21st century are so, so different, that good leadership doesn't change. Honesty, good judgment, character, integrity, those things are just as important today as they were 200 years ago. And we can still learn all those things from George Washington.